<laughs> Statue friends, how perfectly awful it is to be staring into your leering expectant faces again. It almost frightens me, almost. But not quite, for living here in the vault, I've become accustomed to terrifying sights. Anyway, I hope you're ready for a gruesome yarn that ought to tickle your fancy. It's a real chiller that'll keep you guessing. I call it Silver Threads Among the Mold. Somewhere a clock tower intoned the hour of midnight. In his studio, Cedric Harrington worked intently, modeling the final touches on his latest statue. Cedric moved back to survey his work. A satisfied smile came to his face, and he put down his tools. Wonderful. One of my best. All right, Christine, you can relax now. In the corner of the room, a beautiful, red-haired girl stepped down from the model stand and donned a light robe. All done, Cedric? Yes, it's just like you. I'll get a good price for it, dear. I'll buy you something nice. You're a darling, Cedric, to buy me so many things. Why shouldn't I buy you gifts? Without you to give me inspiration, my statues would be lifeless. I love you so much, Christine. If you ever left me, I'd go insane. When will you marry me? You said we'd be married someday. Yes, dear, someday, but not now. Be patient. Ah, it's so easy for you to say that. You don't know the torment I feel. You... Now don't get excited, Cedric. It's late, and I want to get dressed. Christine slipped from his grasp and disappeared behind a screen to dress. The sculptor sighed resignedly and gazed fondly at the figure he'd created. He caressed it tenderly. Christine, you will come tomorrow, won't you? I'll have a surprise for you. A surprise? Why, of course I'll be here. Is it that ermine wrap I said I wanted? Tell me. A few moments later, the redhead stepped from behind the screen, fully clothed. No, no, I won't tell you anything. You'll see tomorrow. You're so sweet to me, Cedric. I'll be here early tomorrow. Good night, dear. Late the following morning, she arrived at the studio. The sculptor ushered her in excitedly. Come in, darling. I've been waiting for you. What kept you? I'm so sorry, Cedric, dear. I overslept. Where's the surprise? There. There? What's all that junk? It's not junk. These are the materials I need to begin the most important job of my career. This is the big surprise you had for me? Certainly. I'm going to do a life-size statue of you, Christine. And then I'm going to plate it with silver. Come, I will show you how it works. It's simple. This vat is filled with a silver salt solution. The statue is placed in the vat attached to an electrode. A block of silver is also placed in the solution and hooked up in the same manner to the other electrode. Then you turn on the current. Minute particles leave the block of silver travel through the solution, and are deposited onto the statue. In a short time, the statue is completely coated with silver. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, sure. Uh, po positively amazing. <laughs> Cedric was so enthused with his electroplating outfit that he never even noticed Christine's disappointment. In the next few days, he made sketches and studies for the statue that was to be his great masterpiece. At last, work was begun. One day, several weeks later, Cedric had to leave the studio for a while. And when he returned, he heard Christine speaking to someone on the phone. Yes, yes, I'll meet you tonight at the usual place. I have to hang up now. Yes, all right, bye. Meet someone? Usual place? Hmm, I wonder who... Suspicious, Cedric waited a few moments before entering. But when the day's work was finished and Christine had left... He followed. Christine doesn't live in this neighborhood. Wait, she, she's turning into the park. Keeping well hidden, Cedric saw her arrive at a secluded spot where a man waited. What? He's taking it into his arms. She's kissing him. That, that two-timing witch. Trembling with anger, he crept nearer. Oh, Gary, if we didn't meet every night, I couldn't stand being with Cedric all day. Don't worry, honey. We'll be married soon, and you'll never have to see him again. 
If he weren't so generous with money and gifts, I think I'd spit in his face every time he comes near me. I know, right? But by hawking and selling those gifts, we added a nice piece of change to our bank account, baby. We have enough, Gary. We can be married now. Let's not wait any longer. Okay, Chris. Tomorrow night. Try to get Cedric to give you one more large gift. Cash. And then we'll take off and never come back. Oh, darling. At last. I'm so happy. The next day in the studio, Cedric seethed and fumed while he worked on his masterpiece. Many times his snide comments started them bickering. <laughs> Christine noticed the change in him, but she didn't care. This was her last day and she was just itching for an opportunity to tell him off. Anyway, by the end of the day, they were at each other's throats. Well, I'm glad this day is over with. I can't wait to get out of here. Naturally. So you can go meet Gary, your handsome lover? So you can run off and get married on my money? What? How did... You followed me, you slimy little sneak. You don't call me names, you lying, cheating, gold digger. Well, that does it, you crummy, lovesick little jerk. I wouldn't stay here another minute, no matter what you paid me. Filthy, double-crossing woman. Oh, shut up. You should be thankful I gave a goon like you any affection at all. Why are you doing this to me? I, I've been so good to you. You got what you paid for. It's all over now, and I don't know how I put up with you for this long. I'm packing, and I hope I never see you or your statues again. At that same moment, Gary was also packing. Chris should be here in a little while. I'm just about finished. Several hours passed. She probably had to work late. Of all the nights, oh well. Nothing to do but wait. Gary sat down in a chair and slept. When he awoke, Love a Mike, it's almost 4 a.m. and Chris isn't here yet. Something must have detained her. She wouldn't be late tonight if she could help it. I'll, I'll give her a few more hours. But when 8 o'clock came and Christine still hadn't shown up, Gary went to Cedric's studio. I'm looking for Christine. Where is she? Christine? I, I haven't seen her since yesterday. You mean she wasn't here last night? Of course not. We finished our work at about 6 p.m. She dressed, packed her things, and left. Why are you so concerned? She was supposed to meet me last night, but never showed up. I'm, I'm worried. Oh, you must be Gary. She told me all about you. Now I can see why she prefers you to me. <laughs> I was stupid to think she could love me. Never mind that stuff now. Where is she? I don't know. We did quarrel because of you, but nothing uh, violent. I saw I couldn't change her mind as she left. I hope nothing's happened to her. <laughs> Gary searched everywhere, but he couldn't find Christine. He even had the cops investigate, but they too could find no trace of her. Months passed, and Gary gave up hope of ever seeing her again. Sad and lonely, Gary again visited Cedric. Oh, hello, Gary. Hear anything new about Christine? No, the, the police have closed the case. I'll, I'll never see her again, but, but that silver statue of her. Oh, that. I finished it the night Chris disappeared. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. I, I, I want to buy it. W would you sell it? Well, yes, but it would cost you a great deal of money. That's all right. I came here to buy it and price does not matter. It'll be sort of a remembrance. The statue was delivered to Gary's apartment the following evening. He took a bottle and two glasses from his liquor cabinet, sat down, and began to drink heavily. Silently, he sat gazing at the statue, draining first his glass, then hers. It wasn't long before he began to feel the effects. Chris, Chris, what happened to you? Where are you? What happened, baby? You know I love you. We were going to be so happy, but now... Now you've disappeared and I'm left here all by myself with only a statue to remember you by. Only a statue to talk to, to put my arms around, to... Whoops! Unable to maintain his balance, Gary caused the beautiful silver-coated statue to fall. It struck the wall sharply. Kablonk!
With difficulty, Gary managed to stand the statue upright again. It wasn't until he saw an object lying on the rug. Oh my gosh, I broke in the statue's hand. I wonder if I can have, I wonder if I can put it back on. I'll have to try. He stood before the statue and suddenly an expression of horror electrified his face. What the? Inside the statue, a hand, a human hand. A terrifying thought rushed into his mind. Quickly, he gathered his tools and began to pry open the statue's head. Oh, Lordy, Lord, please don't let it be what I think it is, please, Lord. The metal split open and fell away in two pieces, unveiling the rotted, decayed, putrid-smelling head of a woman. There was no doubt who she was, for to Gary, the flaming red hair was the most positive identification. <laughs> Those of you who think a body can't be electroplated, hear this. Cedric first completely smeared Christine with aluminum paint, which made her a conductor of electricity. But don't try it on any of your friends. It'll make things a little hard for them. Christine was a very inconsiderate person, but she became a chip off the old block in the end. <laughs> now, get ready for a tale by that big blockhead, the Crypt Keeper. <laughs>